Give us an insight as to who is Herman Mashab. You know, the, the human being that we must connect with. Because often we can get lost in words of politicking and we forget the human beings behind the politics. Who is Herman Mashab? Who must I connect with if I choose to vote? Because let me tell you, I haven't chosen, decided who I'm going to vote for. So I'm a typical voter that you should be persuading to connect with you. Okay, Herman Mashaba uh, is a 64-year-old uh, South African born in a small village called Haramuts in Amanskral on the 26th of August uh, 1959. Uh, my parents uh, named me Philip and Samzeu, but for some reason my grandfather happened to have been home on this particular day and went around uh, the village telling everyone uh, that uh, Hyman is born, and um, and I grew up. Um, unfortunately, Hyman being the name uh, that everyone uh, called me by, and um, unfortunately, also what's important to note is that uh, my father, for some reason, decided to die when I was two years old. Um, and my father, I believe, was a great man. He died of we don't know what uh, you know. Imagine in the early sixties. You know, medical um, uh, intervention in, in South Africa, particularly for black people, was uh, literally non existent. So he died at the age of 42, quite uh, young by, by, by any measure, leaving my, wife, my mother, who was then 38 uh, or so. And um, my, friend, my father was someone who I believe never smoked or drank in his life, was a Methodist uh, church uh, uh, to go a regular. And uh, my mother had to come and work as a domestic worker here in Johannesburg, uh, cleaning white homes and looking after white children. So when I woke up in this world, I'm surrounded uh, by, I'm being brought up by my sisters, the eldest one, 13 years senior. And then obviously you're now five, six, and then I ask her, uh, Where's my dad? This says, no, he decided to die when you were two years old. <laughs> and then what about you? My mom says, no, he's cleaning white uh, homes and looking after white children. And then I said, what about me? He says, no, we're the ones responsible for bringing up. And you can imagine the, 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 the one in charge of the house was still at school at, at, at the time. So what's actually quite interesting and fascinating that i always like to share with south africans so more especially regarding this issue i just raised with you around making babies my father and my mother i think uh, they were great human beings but i think i don't know whether they forgot or they didn't know <laughs> um they kept making babies including me yeah? <laughs> For that, we because, should be grateful, because, at least. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, not, it's not really fair, because I spend uh, a big percentage of my youth in a two-room two tin house. We used to call it a tin house. My father uh, died before building my mother's house. And uh, so these are questions I grew up asking myself, that, but this man, why did he continue making babies uh, in my world? I've always believed you must, as a, as a, as a human being, and a normal human being, you must first build a house um, before you start making babies. Because uh, where do you house them? Human beings don't live out, uh, you know, in, in the bush or in, in the streets. But, uh, but they were great human beings. My mother was uh, loving. I think my father uh, disappointed her by uh, making babies. Ba making babies. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> so so I grew up in this environment. I know how to go to school yeah. in winter without shoes. Uh, yeah. I, I know how to be punished uh, on a regular basis because my, fa my mother could not afford 25 cent school fees. You know, in primary yeah. school those days, uh, school fees was 25 cents. And my, mom, my, mom, my mother couldn't afford 25 cents. But for some reason, I must, we must be the ones be punished. A lot of my peers actually stopped coming to school. Some of us who were determined and with the knowledge that you know, we need education, you know, we, just, we had to tolerate um, the punishment for not having the 25 cents to pay school, uh, school fees. So, you know, that's a kind of environment I grew up uh, awesome. in. But my grandfather, 
really played such a key role in my life. A security guard uh, at the um, Karankua municipality. Uh, he was Machingelani. I don't know if you know Machingelani. Yeah, no, you know, we know. The guy who stayed at the gate. Very familiar. Uh, he was working for the Karankua municipality. Um, the proud Shangan man who really instilled in me a sense of self-reliance mm -hmm. from day one when I was born. Every month when he came home, the first person he looked for is me and uh, spent time with me really instilling a sense of hard work, a sense of self-independence. As uh, My grandfather actually made me and taught me to understand that life is not an easy space to be in, that it has never been, uh, it, it is not perfect now, and it will never be perfect in the future. That's why he, he instilled in me a sense of empowering myself, getting the right type of education, and also making sure that please don't rely on other people if you take it make a decision don't really come out with the nonsense that it was uh, due to peer pressure when you take a decision you can be with five or ten or fifty people when you take a decision take responsibility for that decision that you take you, that you take and i grew up uh, like that and then actually uh, the reason why i changed the name from high man to Herman when I was 14, 15, because this high man was just too much for me. Yeah, no, I'm I, glad you said that because it sounded like you were mispronouncing your own name, but it's good to know that you actually redirected it. No, I redirected <laughs> it uh, <laughs> deliberately because uh, this high man had connotation of my grandfather's expectation of me that I've got to be high, I've got to succeed, mm. you know? And uh, everyone really was... I, I used to feel that my grandfather's expectation of me were unreasonable, you know. So I decided uh, in the 70s uh, when Keza Mutawun started Keza Chiefs, uh, he had a player there called Hemen Pele Blaski. Uh, no, before uh, my time. Long before your yeah, time. Yeah, no, I'm you still know? in the youth league. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Keza Chiefs, when, when Keza started it, he, he had a, a guy from Southwest Africa then uh, called Hemen Pele Blaski. And then... Uh, and I used to play football as well. Uh, all of us black kids in, in the townships we used to f play football. And, and they used to call me Pele. So, so when then Herman was there, Kaiser Chiefs, I said, no, man, it's easy to change it. Though it was not official, it, I, I only made it official um, after the New South Africa because... I could then go yeah, to the home affairs. you could own your identity. Yeah, I can go to the home affairs. And this, so thank you. Know, you. So what funny. I heard is somebody with a sense of humor, <laughs> uh, somebody who doesn't theorize about suffering and struggle, and I'm not talking the way the other green people describe struggle, but the struggle of life, and somebody who, whether by choice, by luck, by support, navigated that struggle and continues to navigate the struggle. And despite all your best efforts, uh, today is Hyman Mashab. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know how many people could have built a successful business that you did in the context that you found yourself without really being exceptional, certainly in the realm of business? I think, you know, honestly, obviously my grandfather played a role uh, to a large extent in my life, but because I'm a Christian and unapologetic, so I um, grew up going to church, I've always really believed, and that's some of the things that my grandfather taught me, that, um, you know, every decision that I take, I must always as for God's blessing, I must ensure that um, whatever decision that I take, will God approve of it, you know? And that actually helped me to avoid uh, doing things where I'm afraid of uh, jail or afraid of a gun. So uh, I grew up in that world and even up to today, that's why I'm not scared of criminals. Uh, I'm not scared of another human being. Uh, I'm scared of uh, the, the super uh, being because I think it, it helps me that I must take decisions 
as long as uh, these decisions are in line with what I believe God would approve, not what another man would approve, because I don't really generally just really So I know at least one person in the room will be asking you the religion and separation of church and state is sitting in that direction. I'm not pointing at him, but he knows who he is. Um, uh, Having said that, I do want to ask one last question, because we have seen that it's not easy for people to change, to cross the floor and change domains, i.e. being successful in business does not equal being successful in politics. And uh, why, do you, why do you think you will be successful in politics? Well, I wasn't born to fail. Um, failure does not exist in my vocabulary. Everything that I do, uh, and, I'm, and I'm saying this with absolute uh, humility, um, whatever I do, I do it to win. Um, do I always succeed? It's not really possible. There are cases where you, you make mistakes from time to time. But if I look in reflection, um, overall, uh, honestly, I think I've, uh, I'm, I'm blessed, and I don't really take uh, those blessings uh, for granted. Uh, when I wanted to pursue an academic career when I was at university, uh, P.W. Porter made it impossible for me to pay, pursue my education route. And then I thought I would leave the country, go for, uh, for military training, get the Russians to give me AK-47, come back in South Africa, cause havoc to people who destroyed You do know we are recording this, eh? Yeah, well, Just checking. No, Continue. Well, <laughs> so I thought I'll get the Russians to give me AK-47, then I come and cause havoc, destroy the lives of those who destroyed mine, because they destroyed my dream. Uh, uh, the National Party destroyed my dream. But, you know, if I look at the reflection, God has always had a plan for me, because my life keeps changing. You know, um, I ended up not getting the right context to leave the country, the country. And I decided I'm not going back to this university because um, it, it's a toxic place. Um, so while still waiting for context to leave the country, I worked 30 months. So far, I've worked 30 months in my life for a salary, two companies. One for Spa Pretoria as a dispatch clerk for seven months, 23 months for Motani Industries. And then all of a sudden, at 10.22, I really got a fright of my life uh, that, my goodness, I'm getting old. And, um, <laughs> and what I'm doing is not what my grandfather would have expected of me. But then my grandfather was, uh, uh, was dead. He died in 1978 when I was in, in matric. Now, here am I in 1981, you know, to realize I'm, I'm 22, I'm getting old. Uh, I'm not going to work for 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 everybody like uh, how my gr- grandfather instilled in me that I must never look upon everybody as 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 my role model. My role model must be myself, and um, that's when I decided. Uh, no, you know what? The only way I'm going to succeed in this case because education is not working did not work out. I said, let me try business, but then not coming from a business family, firstly. Secondly, we, we used to carry pass laws, the passes. Um, should have brought to my brown ID to show you it, your white employer had to sign it every month, restricting you to be in a particular area. And I decided to hell with this nonsense. I'm not going to, uh, to allow PW Port and the National Party to control my life. I was born a free man. I'm going to go into business. And I figured out how I was going to business decided I must buy a car and become a commission sales rep. People are always looking for something to, to buy. That's how the idea of business uh, came uh, into the picture. But for some reason, I had the blessings to say, look, Herman, before you buy the car, get married first to stabilize your life. Um, you're just too dangerous for yourself. You need protection. <laughs> I hope you didn't make children. You didn't make babies, ne? You built a house first before you make it. Absolutely. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I, got, I got married, and yeah, the 3rd of March, I celebrated 42 years of my marriage. Now, that deserves a round of applause. 
And, and I think it's, it's not a question of uh, how many years I've been married. I've been ma proudly married for 42 years, and my wife is my... Yeah, she's my blesser right now because I'm unemployed. She, <laughs> she looks after me and, and she does it so well. But she protected me because uh, I grew up in a very um, dodgy kind of environment. Uh, as uh, boys uh, like music and uh, booze and whatever. So I needed protection. Honestly, I was a danger to myself. And uh, I, I needed a good delivery. Yeah. And I'm telling you, uh, I was just lucky God gave me the best review on earth. Wonderful. So now we know <laughs> the, the, can I say the man, Herman, yeah. the man, who should have been Hyman, but we know better now. So this weekend, you seem to have had a very successful manifesto launch. Um, I must say, I've, in preparation for these events, I've read quite a few manifestos. So far, this is the simplest and clearest and most direct that I've read. So I want to congratulate you on that. Um, but now that we know who you are, can you lead with two or three points in bullet point form? Why I should vote for you? Coming out of you, the key things you are leading with in the manifesto. Why should I vote for Action SA? I think Action SA, we are unapologetic about uh, support for business because uh, the only way we can create an, a viable economy is through business, not this nonsense of communist and socialism. I think uh, those systems have failed. I think we are unapologetically for, for business because we know through business, we, you can create wealth. Okay, uh, business is one idea. Business Second is, uh, idea? We, we believe very strongly that our success as a nation is coexistence. We want to do away with all race-based legislation. Okay, we, good. We, we must say all, all of us must be South Africans. No EE, no BEE, -E, just one, one South Africa. Absolutely. Why don't you but, vote but for no. Musi Maimani? He says one South Africa. No, never mind, just a joke. A joke. <laughs> um, the third idea? Good quality education. Okay. We need to invest in... In education. If we're not going to invest in, 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 in education, we are a doomed nation. And I think for me, it hurts me. Th those are some things that have driven me to go into education because you can imagine as a black businessman, the role we played uh, in assisting political activists then in the 80s before white monopoly capital came, uh, you know, before that. When uh, activists were in trouble or needed money, we were their blessers, us as black business. So we can blame you? No, I think uh, at the time we thought we were dealing with, uh, with socially conscious people, oh. only to realize right now, I can confirm with you right now, the current government, if not all, a big percentage of them are not in politics because they care about my welfare. They are in politics for them is business. Okay. It's, it's to go and steal. We'll come, so, back, we'll come back and think about the criminals in government at the moment. But let's just unpack one of the ideas. It's called Open Opportunity, the Opportunity Fund. Yes. Right? Can you unpack this Opportunity Fund, specifically the 57 billion rand? 55.7 billion. 55.7 billion, billion rand. I presume per annum. No, time. no, no. With the economy growth, with the first year, our our, our team of economists they, they did the, the the study. Uh, in the first year, based on the the current cost of um, managing this BE cost, yes. you know, this compliance with B with BE Act of two thousand and three. We'll be able to to to, to raise fifty seven point fifty five point seven billion. And then, with all the other policies that we will implement, uh, we will implement. Mm -hmm. We quite confident that within five years this economy will grow by five percent. But with the economy growing, obviously this fund because this fund will run for thirty years. Because we are also an unapologetic about redress for black people, black colored and Indians. I agree. So we, I just we, want you just to explain something to me. There's a five percent tax. Yes. Additional tax, over and above the normal tax. Yeah. This Which is will be levied on whom? On, on all businesses except uh, s uh, small ones. Yeah, like, you know, uh, my students worry when they hear increasing tax 
well, on business the, whilst at the same time you're talking about pro-business. Okay, let, let me let me just tell, unpack let, it for let, us. Let, it let just me, sounds let me a bit confusing. To really yeah. understand yeah. that if we are not going to deal with a question of redress, because uh, black people are not poor because they wanted to be poor. They were poor because of many years of oppression by the legacies of our past before 1994, including the brutality of the current government. Yeah. So redress has got to take place uh, to, uh, to, to deal with us. Right now, businesses are subject uh, to this um, uh, uh, Triple B Act of 2003. The cost to that is between 4 and 6%. And, uh, of what? You, you, of GDP or, of business? Yeah, no. The, it costs businesses oh. to, to, to comply with, uh, this, um, with this piece of legislation. Costs you 4 to 6%. At the same time, it doesn't add any value to you. So what we are saying, as Section SA, we will come out with a, our own policy called inclusive empowerment policy. Uh, uh, you know, this policy within it will have an opportunity fund where businesses must contribute to 5%, and we say it's got a time limit. Unlike the current uh, government's uh, legislation, it's got no time limit. In fact, it's a, it's a moving target. Those are some things that made some of us very mad because you think you are complying. You can never comply with the current uh, legislation because they, it's a moving target. Ours is clear. We are saying contribute 5% for 30 years so that we can go and build schools in the black townships. We must go and fund black entrepreneurs. We, let's go and produce more hem and mashabas and, and so forth. Uh, um, let's go and uh, train them. Uh, no black child must, uh, or South African, particularly black kids, must not have an opportunity to, to go to school. Let's go in and deal with this redress because if we ignore this redress, there will never really be social and racial harmony. So the only way we can have that it is when there is so this kind curious. of intervention. I presume you've gone to a focus group like these retailers have focus groups and you've asked a focus group of business people if they're willing to pay a 5% tax for a limited period of, say, 30 years. Oh, it's music to the to they, business they, people. They like that idea. Oh, yeah, it's music oh, okay. to their ears because uh, they, they can run their businesses without being subjected to regular inspections by people who are there looking for bribes. Uh, we as a... So they're willing to start, instead of paying, it's not 27%, for many of them it's effectively 15%, instead of paying that, yeah, but they want the to pay 20%. It's, it's, the, the problem is, is the compliance that keeps uh, moving... So I understand the compliance problem part. I'm just saying, just rethink that a little bit from a business people generally don't like paying tax. Just think about that as well, a question. Um, who likes paying tax? There's no human being on earth who wants to pay tax. Ah. But at the end of the day, we've got to pay tax. Okay. Because uh, how are we going to build universities, uh, hospitals, schools? If, and you're targeting, if people, if people you say this tax. will be targeting enhance SMME uh, investments, which is a good thing, right? But I'm wondering, whether will it really move the needle? I mean, we, uh, academics, business people tell us from time to time that uh, most small businesses that get started fail and very few succeed, and it takes a long time for these things, small businesses, to eventually emerge into medium-sized businesses eventually emerge into large businesses. Have you thought about whether we do have the time to experiment with betting the farm on SMEs um, compared to maybe different ideas around the economy? No, we're not talking about this fund going exclusively to fund uh, uh, entrepreneurs. So we want to really build schools. Uh, we want a school, a public school, uh, here in Nilovo, mm -hmm. and a public school in Soweto must have the same facilities. Yeah. Have the same teachers, be paid well, bring back school inspectors. Principals of schools uh, will not be appointed by unions. If there's anyone uh, in this room who's a member of uh, SATU, yes. you must know you, you're an enemy of Action SA because... Uh, Somebody wants to clap. 
Uh, no. they, they, you're saying unions, especially SATU, is so, an so, enemy oh yeah, no, it's of an, the they destroyed, SA. they destroyed lives. Mm. They destroyed millions of lives. Our kids at the age of 10 in public school, 80% of them cannot read for meaning. 30 years into our democracy. I mean, it is, is this not evil? It's more than criminal. Twelve percent. I mean, twelve million South Africans are unemployed. We've got the highest sustainable unemployment rate in, in the world. To, who created this Kosatu? I mean, this um, Trapata Alliance. They've caused havoc. They are evil people, as far as I'm concerned. They are not. They are not criminal because they've destroyed Satan. Yeah, Satan. You yeah. know, <laughs> it is um, because there's no way a human being. Can deliver so when you go to sleep and you're praying, you think of the devil, you see the ANC. I see, oh, no, no, oh, okay. I, see, I see a devil. I don't see... Uh, <laughs> because, and, and the reason why I see devil mm. is because they are aware of, of their actions for 30 years. Yeah. And some of us engaged yeah. them in the beginning mm. to bring some, to knock some sense into them. So, so and I can tell you, that the more you try and knock some sense yes. into them, the worse they get. Look at yeah. the nonsense we're going through right now. Uh, uh, with the, the speaker of council uh, of, of parliament. parliament, instead of uh, uh, facing her demons, she, we, 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 we must. Uh, she comes out with the entire. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that's that's that's. that's I not, mean, what's, that's not cricket. Eh? That's not good. Oh, I mean, no, yeah, you, you know, know, and I, you we can course, disagree on many things, and, but and, to and, be and, accountable. And the please, eh? uh, uh, Prof. Uh, I hope I'm not sitting on dollars here. Oh, US dollars. Well, you want to know it's green couches. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, can imagine you live in a society like this, yes. and this this is normal. Yeah. It, we we normalize this that we can be governed by people who yeah. they claim South Africa has got the best uh, banking system. Yeah. But they don't believe in it. They put money. They bring money. We don't know how. Yeah. No. No. U.S. dollars and they hopefully, claim to hate hopefully America. these guys that use different kind of savings mechanisms will be, will agree to meetings with and, us. But now, and we will ask them those questions. But let me ask you another question. Just you. You spoke about Satu and them being the enemy of the people. Look, it, it, there's one thing articulating a wish, a dream. Uh, there's another actually executing on that wish and that dream, and on at least two or three occasions, you make it very clear that we need to change the basic conditions of employment. Certainly, we need to change uh, the role of unions. You are very specific about unions in the education sector and the manifesto. Uh, given your past experience in government and the challenges you had when you're running the city of Johannesburg, what, why do you think you'll be successful in bringing these ideas into reality? It's because uh, I'm not in this business uh, to make friends. Uh, I'm in this business uh, to, uh, to save and fix uh, my country. Never, uh, I would not want to coexist with criminals. Never live side by side uh, with, uh, with criminal elements. We live in a country where with the murder capital of the world, the genocide happened. No, I understand that, but I these mean, are I'm not criminals. These no, are these trade are, unions. These are the things that, that uh, propels economic growth in a country because if you, you think uh, you can live in a chaotic environment uh, that we currently live in and you think you can uh, create an economy, you're fooling yourself. You, no, I'm not in an agreement. I'm, talking, I'm talking, talking about the unionists. Yes. I'm not talking about criminals because I want to be careful in distinguishing between Unionists who are operating under constitutional democracy or operating under a rule of law, they're following the Labor Relations Act, they may be doing things we don't agree, the net effect of which is that we've got bad educational outcomes. But at the end, they're still unionists, they are law-abiding, they're not criminals. So I'm, unless of course you, I, you feel I'm being overly generous to the unionists, in which case I invite you to correct me. Okay. So I'm saying... Given that these union organizations are very organized and they've got large numbers of people behind them, why can you persuade us why you think you will have the ability as XNSA to weaken their political power, their influence, to achieve the kinds of goals that you... Without any doubt, I respect our constitution and I, re I respect uh, individual rights. Uh, unions have got the fullest right uh, to be there, and we want them to be stronger. 
But the one thing they must understand, government is not there to represent uh, unionized people. Government represents everyone. So I will engage them like I did when I was the mayor of the city of Johannesburg. I don't know if you are aware, we made history uh, when uh, we were running the city of Johannesburg. For the first time, you can do your homework in the history of a democrat, in the history of this country, where as a mayor, sign uh, uh, an MOU with, uh, with the unions, the SAMU, ANC Alliance, uh, because I made them understand you know, during the period when I was the mayor that when they come and engage me, they must not bring the political nonsense into my office. They must come and deal with uh, human resource issues because uh, it is their members who must deliver uh, the services to our people. So that's why I engage them monthly on a regular basis. I was the first mayor in the city of Johannesburg where for the first time, Samu had direct access to have regular meetings with me. Where in this MOU assigned to say, guys, before I take, um, um, I take budget to, to council, I, would, I want to take you through so that you understand because you're the people who are going to, to build roads, you are going to provide the electricity, uh, you are going to, uh, to, uh, to provide water to systems and so forth. So it's important for you guys to really un understand. I engage them on a regular basis, but obviously there was another section of SAMU which uh, why were bringing politics to the table and they learned very fast. They learned very quickly and that I had no time for that nonsense. Those who were dealing with uh, politics, uh, I would not really engage. But those who are fighting for the rights of employees, which I respect, we have got to fight for their members. But at the end of the day, me at the time, as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg, I was representing their members, civil society, non-union, unemployed, and so forth. So they one stakeholder. So I cannot have a situation where so I'm about the, to the, the unions, that is why as section as they look at in our policy. Yes. No union will ever have a veto right on our policies, be economic, be uh, uh, um, uh, education and so forth. But we will engage them, we will engage them with respect as, as, a, as, a, as a stakeholder. I am about to open for other members to ask questions, but I do want to ask one or two just clarifying questions. Um, despite this position and this track record that is there for everyone to study, as mayor of Johannesburg in coalition government, when we came to um, local government elections, Action SA did well on its own, but not enough. We outperformed. We no, no, I, all I, I, I hope I framed it correctly. <laughs> you did well on its own, but not enough to execute on the mandate had you been in power, mm. right? For, by all accounts, it sounds to me that everybody is not expecting Action SA or the previous blue guys that you used to be friends with to be in power, but the best case scenario is some kind of coalition government. Um, in that coalition government, what does success look like for Action SA? What percentage of that coalition government do you expect to have to enable you to obviously have sufficient voice to pursue some or all of these policies? Look, I think at the moment, the Action SA is uh, part of the multi-party charter, which we signed sometime late last year. You've got Action SA in there. You've got the DA. You've got the Freedom Front Plus. You've got ACDP, IFP, and other smaller parties. So we signed an agreement so that we can uh, give uh, hope to South Africans uh, that um, there is a chance if you vote for one of us. As much as we've got, uh, we don't have the same policies, but at the end of the day, when we coalesce, because South Africa, whether we like it or not, we've entered the era of, of, um, of coalition. No one is going to get uh, over 50% uh, this coming elections. No one. I mean, that's a fact. 
obviously as action as they would love to get 100 percent because then it'll be easier for us um, to execute uh, our manifesto and our policies uh, without uh, being watered down but i think one has got to really be pragmatic can we um Ghana outright majority. We're only a three, three and a half year old party. When we contest the local government elections, we're only a year old. Huh? Uh, launched during COVID, so we couldn't uh, um, uh, uh, could, uh, campaign like we're doing now openly. A few years ago, we had to really be in masks and so forth. So the only way we can be in government, we have to have 50 plus one to be able to really. But I'm saying we, this, we accept this, that this, it's unlikely. This, this, there's, no, as a, a multi-party. Yeah, no, multi a very good chance. Yes. No, no, I accept that. But I'm saying, yeah. of that 51 of the multi-party, yes. what is success for Action SA? What percentage would you like SA, F Action SA Well, to I think... Uh, you, do, do, what we, what we, are you targeting? Yeah, what is no, the realistic Action target? Action SA is uh, working out our, our uh, activists. As I'm talking to you right now, people are opening branches. Some in the country can go live into... Our, our our platform social media platforms opening branches we've already at this point in time by last week we are already 52 percent of all the the wards we've got 52 percent uh, branches open and our target is to have 60 percent by the time we go to the elections on the 29th of may we're quite confident for action as aid to emerge as the biggest player in in this multi-party and why we believe so I think it's because we really look at our performance in the 2021 local government election when we were a year old. Look at uh, our performance in nine by in by elections. We contested nine by elections in different parts of the country just to really test the water. While uh, 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 other political parties are running polls and research, spending money and um, and use that as propaganda. We go for live practical example. We, we're going to contest the elections. We're the only political party. You can go into IEC uh, website. Go and look at where Action SA uh, uh, um, contested by election. If it's in the rural areas or in the black communities, we are either number, we always come out either number two or number three. If but we, no one remembers in, number two and number three. They remember number no, one. No, 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 no. This this shows you the growth. Oh, With a new okay. party, I'm just giving sure. you the But number. let me and give then, an example. When, and then when you come to to uh, to uh, to the suburbs like here, we are number two. Ev everywhere we we could we contest. No, and, and and our and our growth. If you look at from 2021 to now, I mean, we we emerge as the I, I'm not. Political. I'm not. I hope it doesn't come across in an insulting way. I did start off and saying you did well, right? And I think you, you, I should expect we didn't you. just do well. We did very well. You did very well. I'll give that to you. <laughs> 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 I'll give that to you. But, you know, when I say how much, I'm looking for a number, not a story. So like your other friend that uh, was your blue partner, he was here a few weeks ago, Boza. And he said he's targeting 2 million votes. So I wonder, have you thought about the percentage, the number of votes? Are you targeting 5 million, 10 million, 3 million? Okay, look, let, let me tell you at the moment, uh, for the first time in, in the history of democratic South Africa, 27.7 million people are registered to vote. Yeah, 27.7, the biggest number ever. There's no way ANC will get more than 8 million That's of right. the 27 million. So there's 20 million opportunity out there. We want the maximum. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, <laughs> let me tell you, Herman, I wish I had a six pack, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we're going to go for the maximum. I know, and, and I know, I know, but still, you must, you can dream and be realistic. No, no, Prof, let me tell you something yeah. uh, that probably... Because not... the inverse of the question, what does failure look like, right? No. Failure looks like you're not, in polit you're not in parliament. That's what failure looks like. It's not an option. Yeah, well, no, let, let me tell you something, uh, Prof, uh, because uh, that, uh, and, I, and I need, obviously, the audience to, 
to actually know she's a fact. Okay. You know when when uh, you, you run free and fair elections, mm-hmm. when the IEC counts uh, the votes, you know the discussion that you and I are having, they don't factor that into, into the equation. They don't care how many times you fill up stadiums. They don't care how many polls you've run. What they're going to count are the people who turned out to vote on that particular day and which party they voted for. That's the only time anyone can come out with a number, not an academic yeah. number. So basically you're asking me to give you an academic number. And I'm no, I'm not. You're being unfair. You're a businessman. And a businessman, you had sales targets. If anyone in this room knows anything about targets, it's you, Herman. Right? You had sales targets. You had revenue targets. You knew a break-even point. You knew what failure looks like, what... Staying in the game looks like what success looks like. Market share, 100% market share is not a target. That's kind no. of you politicking, talking to the gallery. No, okay. But let, if let me... you are really given the respectful businessman that you are, and I think we here want to understand at the core, what does success look like for Action SAIU? And also ran a junior partner, senior partner. What does that look like in numbers? You must have some realistic number that you are talking about, some boundaries between X and Y, that is a happy zone. Below X, unhappy zone. Above Y, super happy zone. So there must be a zone of happiness. Well, yeah, well I think, uh, you know, our Senate uh, had this debate. Uh, Senate is our high, highest decision-making body of our uh, party. Uh, before we... We, yeah, we also have those in the university. Yeah, so what we did is uh, we went and interrogated the numbers and uh, we eventually said, look, uh, and I think for me, I accepted it because I, I believe in democracy, you know, but I felt my team is conservative, but I accepted. Where we settled as a, as, as, a, as, as action, as a Senate to say, worst case scenario, 7%. Best case scenario, 11%. So we're in that broadband of uh, getting between 7 and 11%. Uh, it can be less, but I can tell you, honestly, for me, I, I guess uh, I, I don't want to be critical to my colleagues. They, they, they know what they're talking about because sometimes I'm crazy. You know? So that's why I need to really be managed. Uh, you know, so... Yeah, so that's why I accepted uh, uh, a seven to eleven percent uh, bend that uh, that's what uh, will will come up. So it'll be historic. It'll be historic. I'm no thumb sucking mm. seven and uh, whatever twenty seven, assuming hundred percent turnout, seven. which is not realistic. So anywhere between one and a half to two and a half million votes. That yeah, is well, your that, happy that, zone. That, that is what obviously Senate has approved. Yeah. But but you got me, bigger ambitions. And I'm saying to them, I said, well, guys, we we're okay. Calling, we, we're really conservative, but at the end of the day, we no, have I to agree. We have no, to thank agree you. I'm, I'm happy to kind of live, let's say, between one and three million votes. Is the Senate's happy zone, uh, the Action SA Senate's happy zone? How are you going to make sure the current 27% is used properly? Let's start there, then we're going to move on to no. Levu's cocktail of three questions. I think, I mean, your question is really very uh, valid. I mean, I, uh, my family... We're one of the big taxpayers in this country for many years. And if I look at how um, these people have uh, mismanaged, stolen this money, it hurts me. And uh, every year I've got to pay taxes uh, that does not really go into social programs. It is for that reason for us as Action SA, if you listen uh, to us at, the poly- at, at our manifesto launch, it is here that we will protect public monies by re-establishment of the Scorpions, whatever we're going to call it. Section uh, uh, Chapter 9 institutions, that must ensure that um, they specialize in dealing with cases of uh, corruption. And we, as Section SA, we say this must be, uh, this units must be independent of uh, political interference. I think, honestly, it's, it's, it's unacceptable where uh, the head of... Um, NPA or the head of the Scorpions of uh, the Hawks must be appointed by the president. The president who puts money under mattresses and is the one who must decide uh, whether people must be prosecuted or not. This unit must be independent, accountable to, to government. We've got to reduce the, 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 the amount of money we pay towards VIP protection 
of uh, politicians. I don't know why they're scared of so society, including assaulting us in the streets, uh, you know. So we need to really invest in, in law enforcement agencies that must obviously deal uh, with corruption. You steal public monies. We believe a section as a minimum of 15 years, no parole. It is here uh, in our document. You say it's, you, it's a crime against humanity. It is, it is crime. You know, you're destroying lives. Uh, so we are saying, no, um, you steal public monies, you must go to jail, and you must go to jail for a long time. Do not and, pass and, and you must pay back to society. What we've actually, um, uh, we are advocating a section SA. We don't want to show mercy to various uh, types of crime. Murderers, corrupt politicians and business people, rapists and drug cartels. These categories of crime, they must pay back to society. We talk about, I can tell you, they're going to build themselves uh, prisons in Kalahari somewhere, next to fertile land. Um, we, we need the cabbage, we need potatoes. No prison now will uh, Monday to Friday be in prison cells and, and form gangs. They're going to work to pay back to society. And I, we, we're very clear about this. When you are sentenced to 15 years uh, after having stolen public money, cheap um, technology, 15 years we're going to count it by days. Every day you're going to see losing how many days still left. We'll never, we'll, we'll never give you parole for those type of crimes. We will have um, parole for Herman's mother because they are unable to feed their children who steal bread from the shop right checkers, get arrested, given six months. Those people will. So you're going to take uh, crime very seriously. You've got pri four priority crimes. You know, so yeah. absolutely agree with you. We cannot accept uh, people who are stealing public monies. And uh, dealing with, with the three questions. Um, talking about the PE, I've, I've made it really very clear that uh, we believe in redress of black, colored, and Indian people. We, we are not uh, we're not going to apologize to anyone. It's for that reason we want the uh, the the the, uh, the, 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 the the formation, the establishment of this opportunity fund, so that it must not just address Herman's economic uh, situation where we create oligarchs. We want uh, black people to really get the best education and so forth, so that when they, they qualify as engineers, they, they are real engineers that they don't need to, to show their color. They can show, produce papers that, uh, you know what, are qualified. And now you but can she's imagine. worried about affirmative action. No. They, let me tell you something. Yeah. That, that is also something that I don't understand why people don't really see. You know, South Africa, black people will constitute what? 85% of Let's the go population. With that. Let's go with that, yeah. Yeah. Now, in an economy that's growing at minimum 5%, South Africa has got a potential to grow at double digit uh, for 10, 15 So years. let's stick it You've at 5%. Now, yeah. what I'm saying is at 5%, I'm telling you, we don't have enough, even if whites would want to discriminate against us, they'll not have enough whites to fill positions. They'll not have. We've got, we've got to learn from the mistakes we've made where we, we want to, to, you do something and you, you expect a different outcome. I can tell you, if you are going to uh, push uh, a situation where you want to share a shrinking cake, you are making a big mistake. What we do, let's grow the cake. I can tell you, once we grow the cake, we all happy as, as 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 South Africans, without any doubt. Do we, I mean, in in, in terms of a non-racial South Africa, people must that be doesn't people rely to, on policies for preferential treatment. Because because otherwise uh, you are not going to, to grow the economy. You're going to punish the economy, and, and then who suffers the most in, in an environment like that? It's like uh, people talk about uh, the minimum wage. And I've done studies on, on minimum wage. For me, it's an evil system. Minimum we shouldn't wage. have minimum wage. Min, minimum wage is an evil system that punishes small businesses and un, uh, uneducated people. Do studies all, of, all over so the world. So the guys like so, in the International Labour Organization who are encouraging... Oh, no, no, no. Those guys, Action SA government, 
we, we'll deal with them. It's like uh, it's, noted. We'll deal uh, with. <laughs> they're not going to come and prescribe to us, uh, uh, even in terms of uh, some what are called so-called human rights lawyers. You must tell us. We must have open Look, borders. I don't want to speak too much for Lebo, but I genuinely think she represents an important voting block of young black professionals who haven't had the lived experience of a system that favors them despite the rules that are supposed to favor them. And therefore, they are not trusting about trust in growth and it will take care of everything. They're saying, give us a scenario where there's no growth. Give us a scenario where we're stagnant, because growth is not just reliant on what we do. It's a factor of other geopolitics that happens in the rest of the world. In that scenario, what happens? Is she back in apartheid but, uh, South but, Africa? But there's no point uh, in honestly arguing about uh, uh, a cake that, is, uh, that's, that we are destroying. And no, we, no, I understand about... And we want to share that. I'm saying is let's, share on the, let's focus on, on economic growth. So you Let's keep what you thing. have... And I keep what I have, and no, then we... we've got we've got uh, the opportunity to fund. The businesses are going to be punished, and we are going to invest in black people. For us, in a section as a, we, we only way we can grow this economy uh, to be a prosperous one. We've got to allow people of the world to come to this country because this country was built at the back of migrants. But however, we must come here legally. And when they're here, they must respect our laws. South Africa is not a playground of criminal uh, uh, elements to come and do as you please. Uh, you come here legally to come and work. We'll make it easy for you to really get the necessary documentation. We need uh, international skills to come to this country. We need people to bring dollars through the, the Reserve Bank to come in, uh, build, uh, rebuild our factories and build uh, new ones. We want people to come and enjoy this beautiful country of ours. But you must come here legally. You, you come to South Africa you bring in your criminal elements, you don't respect our laws, we will not hesitate. Um, firstly, you, you will save time for breaking our In the our Kalahari. Laws. Yeah, in the Kalahari. Yeah. You're, when, yeah, you, you, you're gonna save t time, obviously we, we don't have the death penalty, you'll have whatever the courts will find you, whether you wanna save five years or 10 years, but on the day you complete your sentence, you go home. You go home. But you know, when you say the way you say stuff, sometimes it sounds a bit scary to us law-abiding citizens. Does that not bother no, you a little bit? law-abiding citizens, that's why they love Action SA, because they know under Action SA, the, uh, women are not going to be raped, they're not going to, we're not going to see human trafficking happening in this country. We are not going to see drug cartels bringing drugs to destroy our youth. South Africans will uh, will live uh, miraculously will, be safe, but and but they will know, and and we are unapologetic about. Yeah. We are not going to be kind to criminals. You bring drugs into this country, uh, and we arrest you. You will. But you've got you a will problem you will. of a, a legal system that circumscribes your power. So I'm just, I'm saying for me, I'm trying to kind of reconcile uh, what sounds like it should be a good thing. But when I think it through, given our constitutional democracy, our legal system, sounds like it's going to be a hard promise to deliver on in the time horizon of a typical political party in a multi-party system. Well, uh, uh, let South Africans look. At, the thing is, we don't have a hereditary uh, uh, option to really be the government of the day. That's why we are appealing to South Africans uh, to give us the mandate because once we've got the mandate, we change the uh, parts of the constitution we're not happy about. There's just no way you're going to expect us as an SA government um, to, uh, to, uh, to get a situation where criminals are the only ones who enjoy human rights there. You know, just a few days ago, we were in Sharpville, and um, the Sharpville the massacre thing, we call it human rights. And you look at um, the lived experience of South Africans. We change the name to Human Rights Day, and we say we must celebrate. Celebrate what? <laughs> yes, criminals in this country. If you are on the wrong side of the law, you know, they, that's when people really celebrate. 
but we are not going to allow that. Uh, the so-called human rights lawyers and NGOs uh, that's a, that are there to protect the criminal elements, they'll have issues with us. And we, we will deal with them, we will confront with them, but at the end of the day, we'll make sure that we pass the right legislation where we protect law-abiding citizens. You rape a woman in this country, we expect uh, that uh, you'll never get a chance to rape another one. Uh, you'll never get a chance to rape another one. And that's the kind of society that I'm in politics uh, to uh, create. Don't tell me uh, about Ubuntu. I must feel sorry for, uh, for someone who has raped and destroyed uh, someone's life and you expect me, I must show Ubuntu to that. If you want Ubuntu, if you want a second chance, choose the first option. Don't commit crime. As Section SA, we are unapologetic about this, that there's just no way I think any government would come in immediately and stop um, assisting people. Uh, oh, we need there's their a help. huge we, sigh of relief. We say no, absolutely, we will honor. In fact, um, we committed in the first year of our uh, of uh, Action SA's mandate. I think we've got a figure of 553 rents for the first year uh, and it increases uh, every it's year. It's about 700, but, 700 but, a year, close but, to 1,100. But the provisor is saying to South yeah. Africans, we say, please judge us on the number of people we're going to take them off so, dependence on government. Yeah. Right now we've got, what, 28, 26 million South Africans who are dependent uh, on grants. We have 10, 13, 14-year-old children to be uh, pensioners. So you're talking this about the unacceptable. universal black income stimulus package, package. absolutely. Which will start at 790 and in the first year, 1100 in the second so year, yeah, 1600 in, in the third that year. That is what we committed. That's but, what he's talking about yes, in his policy. And then, but what we will do is that we are challenging you as South Africans. Judge us on how many people every year as we increase uh, the ones that we support. Judge us on, on how we're going to reduce the number. Not our current government, they celebrate the number of people increasing. It's, uh, it's, you de you're destroying the dignity of people. That's why our families are dysfunctional, because uh, we, we have uh, kids uh, born 30 years ago. They've never seen a parent waking up. Uh, wait, uh, Look, I mean, I'm not a big fan of making people dependent. And, and I, I, I think it's a laudable idea, trust me. But how different is this from what the DA is suggesting on this particular policy? Well, I don't, I don't know. I've not really studied, uh, 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 studied DA, and I'm not a spokesperson for the DA. I can tell you about Action SA's policies. You can imagine if I, I must come here and talk about DA policies. When am I going to get a chance to talk about uh, You were able to speak about the other guy and his savings. <laughs> <laughs> you were able to talk about the other guy's savings policies on madrasas, but no. No, <laughs> those, uh, yeah. those are the wrongs of society. No, but what I, I'm saying but is, but, though, but to I, be I can, fair... I, I can't come here and want to tell you noted, about other policies. Noted. Other poli All I'm other suggesting policy. is um, you are able to position yourself as Action SA in a particular way, just like in any product differentiation strategy, because you are mindful about how your competition positions themselves. And so, of course, I'm not asking you to sell DA policy, but it does sound like DA policy for some of us, I would expect that somebody in Action SA has read ANC policy, DA policy, all these other policies to then be able to distinguish Action SA from all of them. And all I'm suggesting is, as far as ideas go, when it comes to basic income grant, it sounds like there's an alignment between Action SA. Well, if it's good, it's then... Uh, it's and then when it comes to education policy, TVET, basic education, it sounds like there's an alignment between ANC and Action SA. No, there's no alignment there. We thought, uh, very, very far uh, from, from the ANC policies because ANC's um, leadership of these institutions are going to be led by cadres, whereas in our positions... These institutions are going to be led by professional people. So the difference, same idea as better executors. Absolutely. I think, I think that's what I'm hearing. Same ideas as the ANC, but better people to execute. 
than the and, and the thing is, so Raz is not just cheap talk. It's about actually doing it. And uh, okay, yeah, we, I'm not trying we, to catch you out. I'm trying to be say what exactly is different. So what? Well, is, it's, it's like um, you know, I've I've been producing shampoos for almost forty years. Um, I always uh, shampoo is a shampoo, but but. Obviously, you add certain ingredients, but you can't then say, but no, you know what, all the shampoos are the same. Uh, you, uh, shampoos are different. That's why consumers um, buy different shampoos, but shampoos are shampoos. So you can't expect me. <laughs> <laughs> continue, continue. So, so you can't tell me I must come out with a different kind of education than, you know. <laughs> no, education is education. It depends on how you execute it. All right. So yeah, I just so, wanted to be clear because some political parties say they've got newer ideas. So I'm hearing that there's some new ideas and some old ideas, but what's really setting Action XN apart is how you're going to execute on some of those, on all of those ideas put together. Absolutely. And, okay. And we, yeah. Okay, so it's getting clearer. Yeah, and, Finally. And, uh, you know, actually what is said about South Africa with the collapse of uh, coalition governments, it's actually quite sad because um, um, if you look at two political parties responsible for the instability of municipalities, two parties, ANC and DA, they've been directly responsible for the collapse of, um, of municipalities directly. And unfortunately, they, they live in a society that is gullible because we, we operate on the basis of headline news. We, you don't go to councils, South Africans don't take interest actually to follow what actually happens in, in a council meeting, how these people who have lost uh, the, um, uh, the votes, how they behave, and how they will use their dollars to buy uh, councillors uh, to, uh, to cause instability. So that has really been the trend. And one thing that you, you, maybe you must understand, coalition all over the world, there's no country in the world where you can give guarantees that uh, coalitions uh, will be stable. There's, there's nothing like that. It just does not exist. All of us as political parties, we want to get outright majority. Who decides? You, the voters, are the ones who are going to decide to put us into a coalition arrangement. For us as an S Action SA, I've had the privilege to run a municipality for three years. Seven parties that I, needed, I had to account to. And at the time when I went into, in, in, into being the mayor of the city of Johannesburg, Prof, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't believe me. I had no idea what it, when I accepted to, to campaign and remove the ANC from, uh, as a mayor of the city of Johannesburg, I had no clue what the mayor does. People don't believe me. I had no clue, but I was determined because I looked at uh, these people, I said, if these clowns can run in government and be mayors, I'm sure I can do it. I ran a seven-way coalition arrangement. It's on, record, it's on record. Johannesburg had the most stable coalition in, 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 in South Africa and delivering every year. So please look at um, the, um, the Auditor General's report. You look at how the city was making massive progress under really difficult circumstances. Why do you think I, I succeeded? It's because I was uh, respecting all my coalition partners, respecting them, including the EFF. Maramuruti Maimane says that's all on him. He says you can't take credit. Musi, Maimane, where, Musi had no idea. <laughs> what, <laughs> Musi had no idea what was happening. In fact, I remember a few months into in, into into uh, into government. It's actually in 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 um, Michael Berman's book where you know one time I, I called them because. The, him and, uh, and uh, some of the senior DA people were wasting my time uh, wanting to like uh, uh, macro-manage me. I called him, uh, James Self, and um, the CEO, Paul Bowie. I called them to my office one day. It was hardly three months into office. I said, Musi, you know what? This whole nonsense of you guys expecting me Every day I must report to the political for, to the DA. I'm not running a DA government. I'm running a government, a multi-party government. 
please, if you guys have no confidence in me, you feel there's someone else better to, do the, to run this government, please, just let me know, I'll, I'll move as, as, as aside. And um, unfortunately, the three years into administration, Helen Zeller, the sabotage team, went uh, to negotiate with the ANC to have a motion of no confidence against me. And I reported this to Musi. Musi was fast asleep, fast asleep. Uh, I came to know because I wasn't born yesterday. I was, I was a Noxman. I was, used to play dice in my <laughs> career. I brought this to the attention of Musi. I said, Musi, there are secret moves to remove me as the mayor, and you are next. Uh, Ellen Zilla and the ANC are having secret meetings, and I gave him the evidence. And he asked me not, I said, I'm going to let society know. He says, please give me a week or so to deal with it. Two weeks later, I never said anything. And then I decided, no, I'm, I'm not going to leave my life to Musi. I then issued a statement, press statement. I said, um, if this right-wing people uh, take over the DA, I'm out. And they thought I was joking. They thought I was joking. Ellen Zeller was elected um, um, on the 20th the, uh, of October on a Sunday. An hour later, I issued a, a media alert to call a press conference. 21st of October 2019, I resigned with all the evidence. And at the time, remember, they denied it. And then, you know, when you tell a lie, the problem is that you've got to keep remembering. Then what happened two years later, December 2022, Helen Zilla being asked by the Mzandile, the, the Mbeche, SABC, says, they had a discussion like this, says, uh, Ms. Zilla, don't you guys think you've got problems, you're losing um, to black uh, leaders? And you know what she said? Musi my money left for this, whatever. So Lindy Way left for this. When it came to Herman Mashaba, you, you know what she said? Says Herman Mashaba, the DA ANC was going to come out with a motion of no confidence, supported by a majority of the DA councillors in the city of Johannesburg because he was an EFF mayor. And you remember that yes, interview? Yes, yes. But before she, she, she denied, denied it, yeah. But when you tell a lie, you know, that, that's the danger of telling a lie. And, uh, and yet, one thing for sure, you'll never find me telling a lie because... Uh, noted with, with enormous respect. Yet you are in, in a, an agreement to be in partnership with the DA. Well, tell me what options do I have when voters... Please, then tell voters must give us uh, 50 plus one. Yeah, uh, I know. Tell the voters. Uh, I, I'm sure I can tell my wife and two children. Yeah, no. Beyond see, that, yeah, no. it's what, not, yes. what I'm saying I'm is, sure. if, if, if anyone believes Action SA must be arrogant, that will never work with other political parties, I think it's not really fair. So the, uh, we respect democracy. Oh. So for us, as Action SA... This multi-party chart, it's an insurance policy we buy in the event we don't get uh, 50 plus Noted. one. Uh, we're working with people who we call the better devils. The better devil, okay. Sure. So the other devil, is it clear and there, are no, there is no scenario? What, with the ANC? Yeah, there is no scenario no, you the see. ANC, I've, I've not ruled it out, but I gave the time frame. Uh, okay. You know, l let me uh, tell you this. Uh, uh, just immediately after the, uh, the 2021 elections were announced, I happened one day to be while well, they were fi finalizing the numbers. Gwede uh, Mantashi approached me, he said, uh, can we talk? I said, talk about what? <laughs> says, no, and can't we form a joint government and so forth? I said to, him, to Mr. Mantashi, Mr. Mantashi, tell me, how, if I've got to, to go into a coalition with you, Tell me, how are we going to, can you give my assurance, can we publicly tell South Africans before we, we go into it, an action as they can go into an arrangement with you, you must go and reestablish the, 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 the Scorpions and be independent and so forth. I said, right now, let me tell you something. Give me, a, uh, wait for my call in 300 years before I can talk to you. 
So we now what three three years or so. So we still got a long way. So we're not ruling. I'm not ruling out, but uh, realistically, but I've, put in, but I've put in a time frame. Yeah. So yeah. three years has already passed. So yeah. So so they must just wait for my call.